Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Michaels Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Podcasting edition for August, I believe the 11th. Yeah, the 11th, 2019. I am WX0MIK and my name is Mike Wills. This season, we are talking or, yeah, we're talking about amateur or if you want to call it ham radio. So today we are going to talk a little bit about digital modes. And uh, before we do that, um, I complained yesterday, and I probably did target just one particular person. Really, it's all you suckers, and I'm included, who are trying to hit this uh, um, mad movie mayhem, or what, I forgot the name of it, it's off the top of my head. But anyway, um, yeah, we're all vultures, so... <laughs> I hope you know, Joe, I was just kind of picking you because uh, you're usually one of the first ones out in there. So um, anyway, um, let's start talking about digital communications. And I did get a recording uh, of um, a, D- a conversation over DMR, and I'll put that right towards the end here. Um, I did find out, and now i got to do more research, that at least the frequency I picked... And I don't know if it's the microphone, if it's the mixer, if it's the, um, what the hell is that thing called? The compressor gate. Something is reacting to the frequency I picked. Um, and it is causing a very interesting sound, I guess is probably the best way to put it. It's like a clicky sound. So I'm not sure what it is. Um, so I ended up using my phone to record it. So the quality isn't quite as good. But I wanted to get you uh, at least to hear what it sounds like on a more of a digital mode. And then uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night rather, um, even though this technically the 11th, I'm recording for the 11th, it's actually the 10th. Yes, yeah, so I record a day ahead, but I'm recording every day. Um I record a bit of the net uh, tomorrow night, A, to cover nets, which uh, is not quite the next topic. Where is that one? It's coming real soon. Uh, Not quite yet. But I'll record a bit of the net so you can kind of hear that example and then hear what um, analog FM sounds like versus the DMR. Um, There is definitely a difference, and it gets really interesting when you listen to some of these people and how quiet they are. But um, we'll cover that later. So today, digital communications. And this is the section that I really think once I can get access to all the right equipment, I will have a blast doing. Because really what you're meshing is your radio and a computer together. And you're doing all these digital modes, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um. So, as I mentioned, you need a computer, and from what I can tell, it doesn't fully matter if you're Mac or PC. There are some things that are on the Mac that aren't on the PC. There's more things that are on the PC that are Windows, I should say, that are not on the Mac. It seems like universally Windows is more common, but there's plenty of things on, on the Mac. And then also there's quite a bit for Linux, too, if you swing that way. So um, one thing to note with digital modes um, is the FCC does limit how fast digital data can be transmitted on different bands. Um, They cover briefly in here. That's about the extent of what they kind of mention. Um, They do kind of mention some of the the rates, but they don't explain why. Um. But when you start diving into the general, now they start talking much more about this. 
And I'll expand a little bit on a few of these. Um, some of the different HF single, the high frequency SSB single sideband modes are uh, different technologies. I'm going to just rattle them off. The book will cover a little bit of them in here. In most cases, it's a passing reference, and you're like, what are these? What learn? What is, oh, I want to learn more. And you will have to go to um, the general book, and I don't, I have, I don't have the latest general book because I hit it just at the end. I don't know if they explain what a um, couple of these newer ones are in there or not, but I do not believe they covered them in my the old version that I took the test on. So some of the more older ones I'll call them are R R T T Y. Uh, or RIDI, um, which is more of a keyboard base from what I understand. Uh, PSK31, I believe, is keyboard based. Um, Pactor is um, more for proprietary, and I think people have been trying to ban it. I don't know, but it's more of a proprietary format. Anyone can use it because you can get this equipment and use it. But it's not, quote, open source. So I think people are mad that you have to buy a $500 part. Or is it more? Something like that. Just to get on these kind of things. So I think they're kind of annoyed about that. But it's a proprietary system. But it's allowed on hand radio. And I don't know much more than that about it. Sorry. Uh, then there's a technology called packet radio, which we we'll touch on a little bit here in just a second. A JT65 is another one. Um, those I, most of those I know are covered in the general book in even more in depth. Uh, one, I, as I reread this, it's like, wait a minute, this is a thing. Uh, so they even mentioned IEEE 802, uh, dot 11. Any of you geeks out there realize that is Wi-Fi. So some hands apparently have adopted Wi-Fi to run on microwave bands. Technically, that's where it runs anyway, but I think what they mean is that it got adapted so it runs on ham radio bands or microwave bands. And, you know, that's something I'll just have to research more because I don't know what that entails or what you can do with it. It's kind of neat, actually. So, uh, yeah, and in case you didn't know, if you remember from before... Uh, 2.4 gigahertz, really anything over 1 gigahertz is considered microwave. So your 2.4 gigahertz was a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. That's microwaves. The more you know, I guess, right? So um, the two I didn't mention yet was FT8 and WSPR. I think those are some newer ones. Um, FT8 is extremely low bandwidth, but apparently is very good about um, in weak propagation to where the sun, um, we're heavy into weak propagation right now. People are using that more because they can at least continue to use their radios. They can make long range, um, contacts. Uh, whisper is another technology. I'm not exactly sure what that's being used for. I think it's more for monitoring the bands, but I don't know. This is all H, most of this stuff is uh, HF stuff, and I don't have a radio, so I haven't, like, dived too deep into it. So, FT8 does look kind of cool, though, and kind of weird because you can almost just walk away from your computer and you'll all of a sudden have to start getting contacts. It's interesting, but uh, we'll see. Until I get a radio, I'm not going to be able to test it out, so... um. Then they start going to a couple of these different, uh, m more of the technician type ones, I guess, if you want to call that. Uh, they start breaking into packet and packet networks. So packet signals are often found on simplex channels between 145.01 1 megahertz and 145.09 megahertz. Um, on VHF and UHF, the packet is transmitted at a rate of 1200 or 9600 baud. Um, for you older geeks, um, you may remember the, I don't remember the baud modem rates, but the, the, the modems that were measured in baud rate 
well, it's very, very sim- similar. Um, if you want to learn a lot more about that, again, go to the general book. They di- do a deep dive into what is a bod. And in simplest terms, a bod is considered, a, quote, a symbol. And a symbol is one short transmission, if, if, I'm, if I remember right. So it's... It's how fast you can send this information. And the FCC has explicitly defined certain bands have certain baud rates. I think most of the computer programs handle that for you. But it's something that you should be aware of. Just in case you, like, well, let's jack this up. No, you can't because you're hitting the, the max of where you're licensed for. Um, and ultimately a packet behaves a a lot like TCP IP and the internet does, uh, where you have the header, which is where it's addressed to. And then there's also a checksum in there for error detection. And then you have the data that is with it. And then if that airs out, the receiving station will say, Hey, I, this aired out. Can you send me the packet again? And it will resend it. So it it works very much like TCP/IP. In fact, I believe that. Well, if I'm not sure timing, so I'm not going to say one way or the other. I guess one was inspired by the other, and I I thought it was the the internet was inspired by radio, but I could be wrong. It could have gone the other way around. But either way, they were kind of one of the first things that figured this the system out to begin with. Kind of cool, it, especially when you start to realize as you go through, um, if you as you start kind of reading about these technologies, watching some videos and listening to some of the histories, you're like, holy crap, these hobbyists figured this out before the, quote, professionals figured it out. And the professionals borrowed from it and used it in a commercial sense. Several items have been have been developed from amateur radio first. Kind of neat. Um, another mode they talk about, I'm not going to cover it much, but it's called PSK. Um, it's more so, if I, if I remember right, it's more like a text messaging over the airwaves. So you just type, and then it will. Then the other person types back to you. I think is what that one is. I don't. That's a mode I haven't played with yet, so I can't talk much more than that. Uh, APRS is, is is really neat. It's um, automatic packet reporting system. Uh, one thing you can do with it is you can link it to a GPS. And then it will transmit out your GPS location your coordinates, your speed, your direction, and so on. And you don't need internet. You don't need anything other than a radio that and with a GPS on it. Well, I guess you need the GPS signal and you need some, uh, something to receive that signal. Um, I was doing a little research actually today independently of this podcast. And th- the biggest use for this that I can find out is in disasters. In disasters, you want to know where all of your radio people are. So these people can then just start transmitting their locations. And assuming you have some sort of an offline map capability, you can now start mapping them on a map and see where they are, where they're headed, and so on. Or, um, you know, if if you had a very elaborate uh, storm chasing type scenario, let's bring it back to my favorite weather, you could have net control. We'll talk more about the structure later. You have someone at net control that's actually watching the location of all these chasers and say, well, hey, can you go head over to Mapleton because there's something interesting look like is coming that way soon? Or can you go to Eagle Lake because I, I... this is looking interesting, or I want you to go investigate this. You could really start directing these people to different places if you had a formal storm chasing net like that. Usually, well, at least the one in my area is not formal at all. It's more of a, hey, if you're out chasing, hey, cool. 
hey, yo, I'm seeing this and or I'm seeing that. And they're kind of trusting that you've had the training. But there are some that are very specific. You must have this certain training. You have to blah, blah, blah. So you never know. Um, there might even be one in your area that's very formal. I would guess more than likely is much more informal because they are volunteers. No one's getting paid for this. We'll cover the, uh, the those rules later. Um, I guess that's about all that needs to be said about APRS. There is a text messaging mode people have talked about. I haven't played with that yet. I don't really have quote good friends so on within there, so I don't like try it out with that. <clears throat> Maybe someday I'll I'll play with that a little more. Um and then when you're using these digital modes, um they are talking much more the old I'll call it the old school radios where you have a mic port and you have a um a speak uh, a speaker port. Yeah, a speaker port. Um and then what you're supposed to do is your your speaker on your radio plugs into the microphone in your computer, and then your speaker on your computer plugs into the microphone on your radio. You know, that way what's transmitting from one, then it gets received by the other. Um, but a lot of the newer, more modern ones, really you're plugging in a USB cable. There's a sound, usually a sound cord built right into the radio, and it just does all that for you. So all you're doing is plugging the, the computer into it, and you're using that as a regular sound card. Um, but they do question that within the book, so you will have to, that is one question I know for sure that they ask it within the questions, within the question pool, I should say. So the other thing I want to add in here tonight, um, because we're talking digital communications, um, especially within FM band, there is several, well, let's see, there are mul there's multiple digital modes out there. So D-Star is one of them, DMR, YSF, or Yazoo System Fusion, P25, which I'm still trying to figure out because everything I've read is related to public safety and not ham radio, but ham radio is using it. I don't understanding that. Um, there's a NXDN, which I don't know anything about. There's all these digital, these um, NFM, especially these um, digital modes that are built into these radios and they're all proprietary. Well, I shouldn't say pri proprietary is a wrong term. They are um, brand specific in most cases. DMR is most cross band, but if you have a Yazoo radio, you're going to have the Yazoo system found of uh, fusion, that foundation fusion. Uh, ICOM uses D star. Um, um, and so obviously each of these radios don't play together because they think theirs is the best. Um, DMR is close as you can get to crossband, but Yazoo doesn't have them. ICOM doesn't have them. All the, so it's, it's a, it's a complicated area. But anyway, on the other hand, not, and not every area has a repeater that is capable of doing these digital modes. So what has happened is some people have got together and created this um, a software called PiStar. It's built right on top of the Raspberry Pi, a Raspberry operating system. Um, within there, they support all of these modes together. And then they also build some bridges from one software package to another. So you can, I, I, through DMR, I can talk to a Yazoo System Fusion um, reflectors, they call them. Each one has different terms, so it really gets complicated. So anyway, this whole hotspot thing is a little mini repeater, sort of. Only it runs on simplex. And it just sits in your house. You can put it in your car. All it is is you hook up to Wi-Fi and you plug it into a USB port. It's, uh, it's, the one I have is just a Raspberry Pi Zero. 
Um, you can get you can use the full size Raspberry Pi and do make that work too. But this is seems to be one of the more popular form factors because it's so small. But anyway, so I use that at home here, and then I use my DMR radio to talk to it, and then I can talk digital. So a long term setup here. I hope I missed. I got to the point here. Um, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play this for you. I think it's KC5SAM. I don't remember exactly what it is. But anyway, uh, Virginia, she uh, I've heard her quite a bit on, on that. Uh, so I do know of who she is. You know, when you start at least listening to these people, you kind of put, oh, yeah, right here, KC5SAM. There we go. I found it. Uh, yeah, so her name is Virginia. I don't. She looks to be older. I, I, you know, I don't know exact ages, but um, she actually has a picture on a site that a lot of ham people use. I'll talk about some of that stuff later. Um, but she looks to be older, you know, upper, I would say almost in 70s, I would think. But um, she sounds like more like an, I'll call it old school ham radio operator. Um so anyway, I, I did this quick little reach out just to try and uh, get a feel for what DMR sounds like. I'll probably only do a small part of the co the communication just so you can kind of see here what it sounds like. It's, it definitely sounds digital. Um, it's got a definite sound to it, but it's still something that you um, is much clearer than regular FM. So after this whole, this five minute setup, hopefully I'm not letting you down here. So I'm going to insert that in here. WX0MIK is uh, this working? Just want to make sure I'm everything's still working right. WX0MIK is working just fine. KC5 SAM. Well, thank you very much. I've been having some weird issues, so I thought I'd uh, reach out and make sure it's actually working. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I forgot your name. Uh, Virginia, right? Very good memory. Very good. Yes, yes, Virginia and Frontenac, Minnesota. Okay, well, you have a good night, and um, I'll probably see you at some other time. Uh, 73 WX0 MIK. So I would like to thank everybody for listening. Um, you can contact me on my website at mikewills.me as I'm stalling to find my notes. And you can find me on Twitter. You just got to search for Mike Wills, all one word. Um, you can email me, mike at mikewills.me. And... Um, that's all I have for today. So um, until tomorrow, 73 from WX0MIK. The frequency is now clear. The frequency is clear. WX0MIK, 73.